I was influenced, like as far as the early dancers that were in my face, were a lot of like what we call tribal dancers in LA, freestyle dancers, hip hop dancers. So. Out of Arizona, you get um, the abstract movement, right? But I wouldn't say that those were the first quote unquote abstract dancers, right? Um, now, what you did, would you consider that abstract? Like, you're st not even what you did, what you currently do. Would you consider that abstract or do you consider that freestyle or um, just originality? What, how do you label it? Um, I mean, at the time, we didn't think about labeling it. And then I remember hearing the term abstract. The funny thing about that word is that one of the crew members, one of my original crew members, after our crew kind of broke up, he actually started a crew and uh, he called it Abstract Flavors. Uh, mm. I don't know if you've ever seen um, uh, uh, Razor Tron 97. There's a battle, the final was Abstract Flavors versus, versus Soul Control. That's the first time maybe you've seen Iron Monkey do, doing a flare and um, uh, that battle was interesting. Um, I wasn't part of Abstract Flavors, but they asked me to, to perform and help them. So I did enter with them. Uh, but I thought about that move more as like unorthodox, I mean that name more like unorthodox, untraditional. So my movement, I never really said I was abstract. I definitely think I was original. I always thought that, I thought I was innovative. Um, I had my inspirations and it was just movement. But with the years, that movement matured. And to me, it's just breaking. Uh, my, my current state of mind is since I'm a b-boy and I consider myself a b-boy, any movement I, I bring into my dance automatically becomes breaking. That's my, that's my take on it. I didn't think about it that way then because I was playing within my, my dance and my craft. But at the time, it was just like storytelling and finding ways to connect things. And one thing we were big on is not repeating. So not repeating kept us creative, kept us creating, and kept us really trying to tell different stories every time we we're in the circle. No doubt. So we, so you don't consider what you do to be abstract. It's just for you. It's just breaking. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it abstract. Um, it could be viewed as abstract, but I would never like if anyone asks me what style I do. It's it's kind of hard because I don't do footwork, traditional footwork, and I don't do power. So I'm just like I just break. No doubt. So what would you say is the difference between abstract? and like originality because when people think uh, abstract okay, i'll tell you about a conversation i had with a guy who um who was you know deep into the abstract and that was like his era he was big into that and he told me that to, when he was saying abstract to him it meant making your move so difficult that it could not be bitten like nobody could take it so for him you could even be doing traditional breaking, but if you could do it so intricate and at such a high level that nobody could ever bite it, well, not ever, but you know what I mean, um, then you were abstract. You see what I'm saying? So like, take a, take a, so by that, by that like ideology, then even people like, uh, why not? As far as top, his top rock would be abstract because it's such high level that it's hard to take. You see what I'm saying? So. Anyway, but I'll let you speak. What do you think is the difference, if anything? Yeah, I, I don't think abstract and automatically think original. Okay. Now, 
because so much has happened through the years. Uh, and, and even the word original, I mean, you can take something that's super easy and that can be copied, but you were the first to do it. Like we just talked about my move earlier. That's not difficult at all. Anyone could do that, but no one did. So I brought that to the table and I, I was recognized as such. Would that be a, considered an abstract movement or original movement? Some people consider it both. And I could look at it how it's going to be an unorthodox movement that can be abstract and original. But even with that same thought, there's also people that could agree or that have said, yo, you, your, your stuff is too easy. Your stuff is whack, but it is original. So that's almost like you're complimenting me, with, but not at the same time. So The backhanded compliment? Oh, I, I, I've, I've gotten those just two days ago. I read a comment on, on some posts of people were pretty much same thing. I was like, hey. Um, no doubt. It's nothing new. The same. But, but for me, yeah, abstract is can be original, but not not always. So I'm going to say a name and I want you to tell me what comes to mind for you. Underground Droogie Squad. Why, why, why Toilet Gush? Because one of the members from Droogie's name was Toilet Gush. That was his, that was his alias. <laughs> no doubt. Okay. Now, if we're talking abstract, because you, like you said, you, you were, you even had members who took on the name abstract in their crew name. So I'm assuming that they considered to an extent what they were doing to be abstract. Where do underground Droogie, where does underground Droogie Squad fit on the abstract timeline because now in my opinion and you could correct me if i'm wrong when we're talking about those guys we're talking actually pre-abstract movement but at but early abstract dancing no i i agree 100 and it's funny you say underground droogies i never heard him references that but when you think droogies at least for me i'm like oh these are some underground cats from when i was growing up <laughs> <laughs> um uh it, it's interesting um I just mentioned the the Radiotron battle with uh, with uh, so control and abstract flavors at a jam called Battle Zone, which is where uh, where Stalin is performed, and there's an infamous battle between Rocksteady and and Renegades in the Cipher. We had a Cipher battle there, which is abstract flavors and myself versus uh, uh, So Control and Corey, who's known his alias was Style Junkie, was from Droogies, and he okay. was in that battle. And me and him were at each other in that battle it was like a two-hour battle and every time he wow. came out, he came out every time he came out like i remember that specifically so droogies i would agree with you 100 percent. i would never at the time look at them and be like yo they're that's abstract style they might have been abstract dancers but i still wouldn't reference them as that they were just always making noise always in the circles always um over the top like if your name is toilet gush already you're over the top <laughs> so it's yo. I can just imagine. I could put myself in the room when they're calling him up. Yo, we need B-Boy Toilet Gush <laughs> to the cypher. <laughs> but these guys never compete. We only see them at, at raves or underground parties and, and clubs. So mm. If we could even call them clubs. It's... Okay. But so would you, but would you put them, like seeing what happened with the abstract movement, you would definitely put them in the early timeline. Oh yeah, no, for sure. No, and no. they came in and left so quick that you couldn't even like com compare them because there might be a lot of quote unquote abstract uh, movers that never heard of them. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And I was told, 
And uh, but I, you were there, so I want to ask you as the as the uh, you know the professional reference. I was told that Pablo and Iron Monkey at one point were part of Droogie Squad. Is that true? I don't know if Pablo. You talking about Pablo uh, Charles brother? Yeah, Pablo. I don't know about Pablo, but Iron, Iron Monkey. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't know, but Iron Monkey was in a lot of different crews, man. <laughs> He was. I was like, damn, he's been a lot of crews. Like, I, uh, a lot of people don't know this, and he might hate me if he sees this, but his early dance name was Blizzard. Blizzard? Even before Sean Supreme? <laughs> oh, I'm the one that named Shock Rock Supreme as a reference of a Transformer, and then he changed it to, to, to Sean Supreme. Oh, wait, you, you called him what, Supreme? I called him Shock Rock Supreme, because there's a, there's a Transformer named Shockwave. Right. So I gave him Shock Rock Supreme, because there's also... Omega Supreme, who was another Transformer, so I put both those names together and gave him that name, but he didn't stick with it. He went to Sean Supreme, but before that, he was called Blizzard. Do you have any reference to why he called himself Blizzard? I, I have to know. Oh, I'm assuming that he came in like a storm and just yeah. blew everybody away, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to have to uh, hunt him down and ask him myself, I guess, that word. That is, that is hilarious. And he was also from a crew really, really briefly called Goop Troop. That was the the, uh, the the nemesis crew to my crew. Hmm. But he wasn't with them when we had that beef. Oh, okay. What was that about? That you know, when you first started, there's always the the arch rival, and for for one on one, which is my first crew, it was Goof Troop. I don't even remember how it started, but all I know is that it was one of those crews that no matter where you saw them, it was bad of time on sight, on sight, <laughs> or. Sometimes we get, we put hands on each other too, but usually <laughs> that to, to something else. But we were right. pretty we're pretty hardcore. It doesn't matter what we saw. Them. We could have saw them at the mall, at a quinceanera, at a ray. <laughs> it, it was on and cracking. We, we battled them. Wow. They kept us on our, made us better. And that was that crew. No doubt. He said, I catch you at the Baskin Robin slipping. It's on. Oh, so <laughs> <he won't play? laughs> no doubt. Um, I want to throw a name at you, man. A name of a guy that um, I've never like been abstract by any stretch of the word. I mean, I don't do uh, like you say traditional footwork, but I do you know just flows and sweeps and stuff, right? But um, B boy homework. One, what was his, uh, did he have any influence on you or did you guys ever, you know what I'm saying? Um, nah. Did you you guys ever get down together? Like, and the, where does he fit in this abstract timeline? The, the extent of homework is seeing him at freestyle session and then, and then asking about him later because he was an interesting guy and then finding out that he got really, really heavy into bodybuilding and left breaking. Oh, damn. So by the time I ran into him, it was late 90s already. So if you see the way I was moving in the late 90s, like, no, he didn't have any influence on me. But definitely seeing him was an instant action just by watching him. I was like, oh, snap. His presence, his movement, his, like, imperfect moves was like that. that for that generation, it was perfect. Right. Which is interesting because um, that, well, I think I saw him on Freestyle Session 3. Was it 3? When he had on that yellow beanie, I think is when I saw him. And um, side note, yeah, exactly. I think he had a jersey on over the thermal or something crazy like that. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, but um, this is just a side note. Something that just popped in my head as we're talking. Uh, Reveal and even Iron Monkey. You said before we get into your your style elements history, I want to ask you if you had to name the top ten. We'll we'll use the term original, uh, original or abstract. So you can put them both into the same top ten. Uh, West Coast b boys during your prime, 
Who would who would you give it up to? Top ten. Five if you can't uh, think of ten. I mean, I could only go a- around cats that were around me at the time, but if I had to think on the top of my head, top ten. For more quality content from Beyond the Cypher with Ill Skills, don't forget to press the like and subscribe buttons. Let us know how we're doing down in the comment section. And to make sure you don't miss anything from the channel, smash that notification bell. We appreciate the love and support. Peace. Until the next episode.